Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I'm super excited to share five DIY projects with you. There's gonna be a lot of ground to cover, so let's jump into project one. I have wanted to try some concrete projects and see what decor items I could make using just plain concrete. Following the manufacturer instructions, I'm using two parts concrete mix to one part water. I recently ordered some silicone molds on Amazon and you'll find that in the description box below. And just using a spatula as well as a wood stir stick, I'm just going to stir the uh, concrete mix and you're looking for something that's similar to a cake batter, but it's okay to play based on the manufacturer's instructions. You are looking for it to be somewhat runny because we want to lose air pockets in the concrete. The concrete stirs up very quickly and is quite easy to use. The really nice part is, is you can make small batches just to start out if you're learning to use concrete. Using a mixing cup was super helpful as it had a spout for pouring. Once you place your concrete into the molds, you just want to shake it a little bit. So this way, again, you're just trying to help those air pockets. Dry times are going to vary based on room temperature and how much water, but 12 to 24 hours. And here you go. You now have a candle holder. It actually turned out quite nice. I'm quite delighted how simple this was, easy to use. And of course, you can reuse the silicone molds for a lot of different projects. But with the concrete ones, these are going to make great gifts as well as your own personal decor. I love the raw concrete look, but if you wanted to, you could always paint them as well. How simple and inexpensive for beautiful decor. Using super thick, chunky, soft chenille yarn, I want to show you how easy it is to make a basket. All you're going to do first is make a slip knot. So you're going to fold over and grab that working yarn, pull it through. You're going to have a little tail and perfect. You now have your first stitch. All you're going to do now is with the working yarn, you're going to add three stitches. You're only going to make three stitches with the working yarn. You're going to use the first stitch and the last stitch, and you're actually going to make a single crochet. So you pull the working yarn through one loop, then you're going to pull it in into the remainder two stitches, giving you one stitch again. That is a simple single crochet. You're going to go into that first stitch five times with one single crochet. We are going to start a circle wheel, and this is going to be the bottom base of the basket. So again, those three simple stitches, you're going to do a single crochet five times into the first stitch. Using a paper clip, this tells me how many rows I have. It sometimes can be helpful. So now that I'm in row two, I want to expand the wheel. Normally to add to your wheel, you're going to actually go through one of those loops. But because this yarn is so bulky and I just found it easier to go through both. So what you're going to do for your second row is you're going to do one single crochet in the first stitch. When you get to the second stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. You're going to keep repeating that till you get back to the marker of the paper clip again. Every second stitch, is two crochets in one stitch. This will expand the wheel again. Now that I've completed my second row, I'm using my marker, finish my last stitch, then I'm going to put my marker back to, again to start a new row. But what you're going to do is every third stitch, you're going to add two single crochets. So each stitch, you're going to do one regular stitch, single crochet, one regular stitch, single crochet. Third stitch, you're going to put two single crochets, again, on every third stitch. 
The easiest way I found to remember this is second row, every second stitch, add two single crochets. Third row, same thing, every third stitch, add two single crochets, and so on. We will be doing four rows to create the bottom of the basket. And again, when we get to the fourth row, every fourth stitch, you're going to add two single crochets. When I first learned to do this, I had to try it a couple of times, but once you get it, it is so easy, I promise. But it's okay to try it a few times until you get the rhythmic of the pattern. Once the floor of the basket is completed with all four rows, I'm going to show you how you're going to build your walls. This way we can build up instead of out. So doing the exact same thing we did before, we are using each crochet stitch all the way around, but we're not adding stitches anymore. And by not adding, what's going to happen is we're going to start to go up doing the exact same thing as I mentioned, just single crochet. So you're going to use your fingers as your crochet hook and you're going to yarn once, yarn twice. That's as easy as it is for a simple crochet. To tie a new skein of yarn, you're just going to make a knot and cut off the little ends and carry on. This project took two skeins of yarn, so you only need two. And it only took about a half an hour to make. All we're going to be doing is going around the entire wheel doing one single crochet and just keep going around. You're going to notice that it's going to start building up and again because we're not adding new single crochet stitches in the rows. I love the look of this actually inside out but you don't have to do that so you can pick whichever side you like. I chose to do it inside out. To close the basket, you're just going to cut your working yarn as well as with your last stitch, you're just going to go ahead and tie a knot and any remainder of the tail, you can just weave it in. The small tail that we started with at the beginning, you can just weave that into the stitches. I'm going to be using a canvas belt material for some handles for this basket. So I'm just going to cut the sizes that I needed. I threaded it through the basket and counted the stitches so they'll be equal on both sides. I have this wonderful little snap kit, but if you don't have anything like this, not to worry, you can always just sew some buttons on to hold your straps into place. But this little kit that I have is actually very inexpensive and it will be in the description box below. But this is great for straps, bags, and other baskets that I would like to show you how to make. There are so many materials that you could use for straps. I would have used faux leather if I had had it, but this turned out pretty good. For this project, we're going to make a super easy chunky knit blanket. And the easiest thing is you don't have to have any experience knitting. It's so simple. All you're going to need is some chunky chenille yarn, and you can find that in my description box below. The best part about this project, you have a chance to win this beautiful extra large chunky chenille blanket. All you have to do is give a thumbs up leave a comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. I will announce the winner on next week's video. To create this cable knit blanket, we're going to need six skeins of yarn. First thing we're going to do is make a slip knot. So you're going to turn the yarn, then pull the working yarn through, make your first stitch. Now, what we want to do is we want to cast on stitches. So pull that working yarn through each loop and you're creating stitches. And we're going to need to cast 
30 stitches. To create our second row, you're going to use that top bump, stick your two fingers, grab the working yarn and create another row of just a single stitch. The rule that I do is I drop the last stitch because I'm going to tell you a little bit later. First thing I want you to know is you're going to use the working yarn and you're actually going to create bumps on the top, then you're going to create bumps on the bottom. So I'm going in twos. So two stitches on the top, then you're going to do two stitches from the bottom. You're pulling the working yarn from the bottom of the stitch. It's actually called a purl stitch when you go from the top, but to make it less confusing, I find it easier to do two from the top, two from the bottom. The last stitch again is always, always throughout this entire blanket is going to be stitched from the back. And that way our border will be the same all the way around. So I'm going to create my next row following the same pattern, two stitches, so you're using the working yarn behind the stitch and two stitches from the top, going from the top with the working yarn. The two side stitches, the two end stitches are always from the back. So we're gonna go and make six rows following this pattern. Two stitches on the top, two stitches from the bottom. I like my border of the blanket to be the same. So always remember, you're gonna stitch from the working yarn from the back. You're going to create six rows of this. On the seventh row is where we're going to do something a little bit different. And again, when you need to get a new skein of yarn, just tie the two ends together, pull it quite taut, and then you're just going to cut off those little remainders and we're good to go to carry on. Now that I've completed my six rows doing the exact same pattern, now we're going to start the cable part. So as you can see, the outside border is matching and that's because we're doing that back stitch on the last stitch on each side. The key with the cable is you're just going to swap. So using the stitch where we're actually stitching from the back, each of those two stitches, you're going to cross them over. You're only going to do this for one row and that's how the cable stitch blanket works. That's it. Once I'm done this row, finishing my swaps just on those two stitches, and again that was the back stitch, not the front stitch. Once I've done that one row, I'm going to turn to go into my next row and do the exact same six rows that we did at the beginning. So going back to the pattern, two back stitches, two bump stitches in the front, two back stitches, two bump stitches for another six rows. So every seventh row, we're going to do that cable stitch where we cross it over. It's that easy. That's the only thing that makes a difference for this type of blanket. And it has such a beautiful effect. So again, you're only going to do the cable crossover every seventh row. The remainder six rows, you're just doing the two bumps under, the two bumps over your stitch. So if you're going to be doing any type of cable blanket or you want to make one that's a little bit bigger than this, that's the only thing in the pattern that you need to know is every seventh row, you're just going to cross those over. Now what I want to show you is, this is personally what I do. My last row, I just always do the back stitch across. Just like I did at the beginning, I just did a back stitch before I started to make my pattern. I just find it looks tidier to do it that way, but you don't have to do that. I completed this blanket in just over two hours. That's how fast and quick it stitches up. Now I want to show you how to close your blanket. You're going to take two stitches, pull your working yarn through. With your new stitch, grab the next one, pull your working yarn through. So you're just doubling up the stitches that are remaining and closing off the blanket. So now that I have a stitch, I'm going to grab, pull the working yarn through. And I'm kind of working from right to left, even knowing I'm going from left to right across the blanket. But you can see now 
all the square sides are actually in the same stitch so it has a nice frame to the blanket. Once you're done just pull your working yarn through tie a knot and any of the remainder tail you can either cut or you can just weave it through. I want to show you how easy it is to create your own decor baskets just using a t-shirt yarn. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter crochet hook. Starting with a slip knot, all we're going to do is cast on three stitches. So just grab the working yarn, pull it through each loop. Once we've created three, then we're going to go back to that first stitch. Using a single crochet, we are going to add in 10 single crochets in that first stitch. So again, simple, easy, single crochet. All you're going to do is stick your crochet hook in. You have two stitches, yarn once, yarn twice, and that gives you a single crochet. So I'm going to repeat that nine more times in our first stitch this is going to start to create a wheel. What I love about working with a t-shirt yarn is it twists as you're working with it. So this actually hides any little imperfections. But as you can see, I've added in 10 single crochets into that one single stitch and I've created a little tiny wheel. Now, as we go around, we're going to keep adding stitches and we're actually going to use that outside hoop on the single crochets. There's two hoops. We're actually just going to stick the crochet hook in the first loop, making a single crochet. You're going to keep going around, but what you're going to do is every second stitch, you're going to add a single crochet in the same stitch. Again, we want to expand the wheel to create a base for the basket. There is no real pattern. All I want to do is keep expanding it. And I wasn't even sure how big I wanted to make this, but I thought I would try for something a little bit on the larger side. So again, how big you want to make it is totally up to you. But all you're going to do is every other stitch, put two single crochets in every stitch. And this is going to keep expanding. So until you've reached a size that you want, I think I'm going to aim for around that 10 inches. But the key with this is instead of going through both of those uh, crochet loops, you're only going to go through the back one, creating one single crochet. Every other stitch is doubling up your single crochet. It's that easy. The beautiful thing about working with the t-shirt yarn, again, it twists. So if you did make a little tiny mistake, it's pretty hard to see it. Now, what I want to show you is how we're going to create the wall. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through both of those stitches now. Because we're not going to be adding any more stitches, what we want to do is go around and just keep adding to the stitches we have in our actual wheel. Again, once you've made the bottom base of your basket, you want to go up. So you're no longer adding two single crochets into one stitch. You're only going to do a single crochet in each stitch. You're going to keep going around and around. And as you can see, the wall starts to come up. This is a super smooth yarn to work with, and it's really, really forgiving. I love the stretch that it has. So it obviously is not going to stitch up as quickly as big bulky yarn, but it does stitch up quite quickly. This entire basket probably took me about five hours, and of course I did not do that at one sitting. 
I also use two full skeins of the t-shirt yarn in the hooked brand, which I will leave in the description box below. Once I'm done with my walls, all we're going to do is tie our last stitch together and tie it into a knot. And then any remainder of the tail, you can either cut it off or you could weave it in, whichever you prefer. But that's how easy it is just to make your own baskets. And you can do this with jute ropes and other fabrics out there as well. So, But I really love this t-shirt yarn. I'm also going to show you how to create more stability and structure for your basket so it can sit up on its own rather than looking like a bag. Right now I'm cutting some jute rope and I'm cutting it in about 24 inches in length and I need three pieces for each side. Tying a little knot on each end, I'm just going to braid and all I'm doing here is just creating handles. Once you're done the braid, you're going to tie a knot at the other end and you want the knots to be fairly thick and you want to really push them through one of the stitch holes. And again, I just count how many stitches in between the first part and to the second part of the handle and match it up so it's equal on the other side. Because I didn't follow a distinct pattern, I just kind of stitched as I went. It turned out to be 18 inches wide and 14 inches in length. Now, what I want to show you, a quick and easy way that you can actually create a little bit of stability inside the basket to hold the walls up a little bit easier. Rolling up some simple cardboard, you could also add some material on top of the cardboard just for aesthetics, but this helps hold the architecture and the basket into place. Using the same concrete mix as we did in the beginning of the tutorial for the candle holders, I have some silicone molds which I thought would be interesting to create new drawer handles or drawer pulls for furniture pieces. To create the mix was two cups of the concrete mix as well as one cup water. And it's okay to play around with that ratio and again, Follow the manufacturer instructions based on the concrete product that you're able to use. I found it a little bit helpful to have the concrete mix a little bit on the runny side and again this helped with the air bubbles. I filled up all of the silicone trays and I'm going to let that dry overnight. To add to the drawer handles, using a wooden dowel, we decided to go ahead and use a handsaw to create three inches and we made four of them. There's also going to be a little recessed area using a wood chisel. Just going to cut out a little notch there just with a wood chisel. This will be the placement for the screw. I would like to show you eight different design ideas I came up with using the cement molds. Each of these trays had 24. So I have 24 of the squares, 24 of the more rectangle, and 24 of the little round circular pieces. I thought it might be nice to add in some wood ideas as well as perhaps maybe even some copper. I used a 220 grit, but I would recommend maybe 300 or finer just for the backsides to smooth them out. To place everything together, we're going to use the Gorilla Epoxy Glue. We're also going to be using an assembly nut and we're going to be using the machine screw. The assembly nut is actually going to be for some of those notches that we have in the back and this is going to be the full placement as part of the drawer handle. 
So the epoxy is a pretty easy mix. You only need to put out whatever amount that you need and you do not need very much. If you wanted to, you could also use the E6000 glue as this is a fantastic glue for the same project. Just using a tiny, tiny amount of the epoxy, we're gonna be using the long copper caps as well as some short ones and just going to play around with a few of the designs based on the concrete molds that we had used. So it's pretty easy to adhere everything together again with the either epoxy or you could use the E6000 but there's lots of other designs you could create with similar materials. Using a small piece of scrap wood we were able to sand down to the similar size of three inch and cut the exact same wood square to match the concrete square. Again just playing around some different ideas, and a lot of this was actually inspired by anthropology. If going through the hardware listings on their website, they have some similar ideas, so it was inspirational to see other ideas. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And please, if you have a comment or a question, leave a comment in the comment box below. All the products and supplies in which I use for my videos will be found in the description box below as well. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. It's gonna tell you when I upload my next video. And until then, take care, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon.